Military spouses have some of the highest unemployment rates at a steady 22 percent. The Defense Department, Congress, and the White House have introduced several programs to get after that problem. Federal News Network's Anastasia Obis joins me with an update. And Anastasia, let's start with the fellowship opportunities for military spouses. That came from the department itself last year. How's that going? It's been pretty successful so far. Uh, They launched this program, just like you said, last year. It was mainly focused on placing career-ready military spouses into those paid fellowship opportunities. So they were maybe mid-career or something like that. The way it works is it connects hiring managers with military spouses for paid 12-week fellowships across different career fields. In the first year of the program, About 250 companies signed up to provide those fellowship opportunities to military spouses. Almost all of them ended up getting a permanent job, and they got paid more than $65,000 per year. This January, they added 100 more fellows, and 23 people have graduated so far. All of those got a job afterwards. The program has been mainly focused on career-ready military spouses, But now the department is going to expand the program. It's going to provide more entry-level opportunities. Those career fields will probably include something like taxes and insurance, but we're still not sure. Here's Patricia Barron. She's the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Military Community and Family Policy on what they're offering this year. The Military Spouse Career Accelerator Pilot, or MSCAP as we call it, has been a rousing success. We've really seen great placement. I think over 400 spouses in the first year that were placed in fellowships, and there was something like an 83% turnover into permanent employment, which is you know unheard of. It's just been a great program. And this year, we actually uh, in introduce entry-level positions as well. Last year, our first year, it was really career-ready spouses. And this year, we're looking at those entry-level jobs for those younger spouses that might need to put their foot in the door and kind of start the process of having employment and a career. And that's not the only DOD program to improve spouse unemployment, right? There are a couple. But one thing that they've been trying to get after for many years is transferring professional licenses to other states. It's been an issue for decades for military spouses. Last year, President Joe Biden signed a provision into law to make it easier for spouses to transfer their licenses to a different state. But states have been figuring out how to implement that law, so it's been a challenge. But also Congress authorized the Defense Department to enter into a cooperative agreement with the Council of State Governments to develop interstate license compacts. So that's been going on for a year. The Defense Department said it completed seven compacts. They're right now available for consideration uh, by state legislature. And those include massage therapy compact, school psychologist compact, social work, cosmetology, dietitians compact, and dentist and interstate teacher mobility compact. Here's Patricia Barron on some, some of the challenges with this effort. Yes, there was the law that was passed January 5th of last year that allowed military spouses that were coming into a state from another state to uh, use that other state license to continue to work. The challenge with that has been that the states are still trying to figure out how to implement that that law, and therefore it, it's a little bit slow moving. However, even within that law, they call out the interstate compacts as kind of the gold standard. If there's an interstate compact in that state already for that career field, it, ta- it takes precedence over, over that particular law. And by the way, Anastasia, how does DOD actually track all of these numbers in the first place to know who's employed and unemployed? The answer is they're not tracking it. There is no employment numbers for military spouses, like there are numbers for veterans, for example. It's difficult to track those numbers. There are about 600,000 active duty military spouses right now. And we know that the unemployment rate, just like you said at the very beginning, has been around 22 percent. But even that number is an approximate percentage. Here's Patricia Barron again on the things they're potentially looking into when it comes to tracking those unemployment numbers. We do have a great relationship with the Department of Labor and have connected with them on various things. 
the tracking of unemployment for military spouses, I believe, is is something that we both talked about. I think it's a little bit harder to track military spouse unemployment because it's not a protected group. And so it's, sometimes it's hard to kind of find the, the information that you need. However, having said that, we've got new tools at our at our fingertips now through AI, through some of the analytics that's like a company like Google might provide. And I'm not saying that's what we're doing. What I'm saying is that we've got new tools now that we can look at to help us get after that number. All right. And at the top, we said that Congress is also looking into this, not just the Defense Department, the issue of military spouse unemployment. What's going on in Congress? Last year, the House Armed Services Committee, they stood up the Quality of Life panel. And last month, uh, the panel finally came out with their report, with their final report. There was a whole section devoted to military spouse, spouse unemployment They recommended making that paid fellowship program that we just talked about. They recommended making it permanent because it's still a pilot. They also want to expand child care access to spouses looking for employment. So if that's implemented, spouses will have up to 180 days of child care when they're looking for a job. Also, they want to give the Defense Department permanent authority to enter into a cooperative agreement that we were talking about with the council states so that it's going to make it easier for them to work with them to develop those compacts. Here is Representative Chrissy Houlihan of Pennsylvania on some of those efforts. Supporting military spouses and expanding child care access from 90 to 180 days while a spouse searches for a job. And finally, permanently expanding the partnership that exists between our U.S. Chamber of Commerce and their Hiring Our Heroes program and the military so that we can utilize existing networks in the civilian world to make sure that we support our military spouses. I could tell you countless stories that we heard from the countless people who came in front of our, of our working group about why all of this is so important. That was Congresswoman Chrissy Holohan of Pennsylvania. Federal News Network's Anastasia Obis, thanks so much. Thank you, Tom. And be sure to check out her story at federalnewsnetwork.com.